In this video, we're going to continue working with the chain rule and the power rule and the product rule and all of the rules that we have learned. So we're just going to do some differentiation practice and look at some strategies that we can use for different types of questions. In general, what we want to do every time is to factor out a constant if they have it. So remember that constant rule says, if you have a constant, just sort of move it out of the way, do your work and then plug it back in. Um, also, if you have more than one function involved, you can assign u and rewrite your function in terms of u, or you can do that part in your head. So it's not necessary for you on your paper or on your work to show me what is u and what is u prime. Now, if you have a rational function, if the numerator is a constant, rewrite the expression using a negative exponent to deal with fractions. Um, and again, that means, let's say I have three over X minus two quantity squared. Well, I'll just take the three out and then write this as X minus two to the negative two. For problems with multiple instances of a factor, factor out any least powers. This one will make more sense when we do a practice, which I promise we will do in this video. And for rational solutions, simplify the solution to be written as one fraction. So let's take a look. We're just gonna do some practice and we're gonna work through these together. So if ever you wanna just pause and try one on your own, feel free. But for this question, I'm going to choose a strategy of a rewrite. So I'm gonna take the 12 out. Actually, I'm gonna reduce the 12 and the four to three and one. So now I have three and then I have x squared minus three to the negative four. So now if I'm finding the derivative, I am going to use the chain rule. Now, do I need to write it as u and f of u? I don't, but you can. If you are still doing that, u would be x squared minus three, u prime would be two x, and then f of u would be three u to the negative four. So that's how that would work if you're doing it in that way. So f prime of u would be three times negative four or negative 12, and then u, which is x squared minus three. And again, I'm going to reduce the negative four by one, so that's negative five, but then I have to take the derivative of u, which was two x. And then I'm just gonna simplify. So negative 12 times two is negative 24, and then I have x, and then all of this, x squared minus three to the positive fifth will go in the denominator. So that is my final answer, and that wasn't so bad. Again, it's not necessary for you to show me what is u and u prime and f of u. Once you get to the point where you're doing that in your head, it will save time and save paper. Let's do another practice. We have no constants here to factor out. We can certainly assign u and rewrite the function in terms of u or not. So in this case, I'm not going to, just so that you can see uh, what I'm going to do. So g prime of x, notice this is two different functions. So if I have two functions, both dealing with x, I have to use the power rule. So the power rule, I'm sorry, the product rule. So the product rule says take the first, times the derivative of the second. So really I'm going to be rewriting this as x and then two x minus three to the one half. So what is the derivative of this or this? Well, that is one half two x minus three to the negative one half. Careful, chain rule says, what's the derivative of two x minus three? It's two x. I'm sorry, it's two. So that's the first times the derivative of the second plus the second, which is two X minus three to the one half times the derivative of the first. So the derivative of X is just one. So now let's do some cleanup because this is a little bit ugly. So one half and two are just one and they cancel out. So I have X and then I have two X minus three to the negative one half 
and then I have plus 2x minus 3 to the 1 half. Do not leave your solution like that. So what I have is this is x over 2x minus 3 to the 1 half. Now, if I want to write this as a fraction over 1 half, I'm sorry, 2x minus 3 to the 1 half, then I would have to multiply by 2x minus 3 to the 1 half on top and on bottom of my fraction. So now I have a common denominator of 2x minus 3 to the 1 half, but what does this become? This becomes 2x minus 3 to the 1 half plus 1 half is 1. So I can rewrite this now as 3x minus 3 over 2x minus 3 to the 1 half. So that's g prime of x. That is the correct way to, to simplify that. And if you really want to, you could also write this as 3x minus 1 in my numerator. Either one is just fine by me. Here's another practice for us. The first thing we're going to do is factor out any constants, which there aren't any. And then we're going to assign u and rewrite your function in terms of u or to do that part in our head. So if I'm doing that part in my head, essentially I'm saying all of this is u. So we can see that the issue here is that when I'm finding h prime of u, it's going to be 2 u, u prime, and the u prime is going to be tricky just because it's the quotient rule. But let's go ahead and go with it. So to find h prime of x, I'm going to take 2 times u, x plus 5 over x squared plus 2 to the first power, and then u prime. So now I have to take this and find the derivative. So the derivative is using the quotient rule that says take the bottom minus the, I'm sorry, times the derivative of the top, which is 1, minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, which is 2x, over the bottom squared. And this last bullet hole says, for rational solutions, simplify the solution to be written as one fraction. So don't leave it all messy like this. Just do a little bit of cleanup. h prime of x. So in my numerator, I have a 2. I have a factor of x plus 5. And then what I want to do is clean this up. So how do I clean that up? I have x squared plus 2 and then I'm just going to rewrite this part as x times 2x, that's minus 2x squared. And 5 times 2x is minus, because of the minus, minus 10x. So when I clean up the top, I've got negative 2x squared minus 10x. Oops, just kidding. Hold on. I forgot. I've got an x squared here and a minus 2x squared here. So I have minus x squared, and then I've got minus 10x, and I've got plus 2. And then in my denominator, I have x squared plus 2 quantity cubed, because I have one of them here, and I'm multiplying, so now I have three of them. So I can leave my solution just like this, or if you check your solution, you'll probably see it written like this instead with the 2 minus 10x minus x squared written in that way. There's not one that's more correct than the other. It's kind of up to you which way you do it. Um, you could even factor out the negative and then make that a positive x squared, a positive 10, and a negative 2. So it's really up to you. Any of those solutions is just fine. Let's finish up with one last practice, and what I'd like for you to do is just get as far as you can. This is asking you to not only find the derivative of the function, which there's a lot of ways that you can mess up the derivative of this particular function. Then it asks you to find the slope and then the equation of the tangent line at the point pi comma 1. So what I'd like you to do is just get as far as you can. When you're ready, press play to see how you did. So first thing I would do is think about the fact that f of x 
is really the function cosine of 2x quantity cubed. So if I'm finding the derivative of that function, I'm going to use a lot of the rules that I've learned. I'm going to first use the power rule that says this is 3 times the cosine of 2x to the second power. But then the chain rule says cosine of 2x has a derivative. And the derivative of cosine of 2x is negative sine of 2x. And this is where most people make their mistake. Sine of 2x has a derivative. I'm sorry, 2x has a derivative. So I have to use the chain rule again to make that a 2 because the derivative of 2x is 2. So I actually had to apply the chain rule more than one time. So keep that in mind as you're moving forward. I'm going to rewrite this as 3 times negative times 2, so negative 6. And then I've got cosine of 2x quantity squared and then sine of 2x. Now, that's the first step. So if you got that far, great work, because it's very easy to mess that up. Now I'm going to find, keeping in mind that my goal is to find the equation, which to find the equation, I'm going to use y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. This is point slope form. And in order to find the slope, I need to find f prime at the x value. So the x value is pi. So at pi, I'm going to take negative 6 times the cosine of 2 times pi, quantity squared, times the sine of 2 times pi. Well, negative 6, cosine of 2 pi is 1, 1 squared is 1, sine of 2 pi is 0. If I multiply all of that out, I get 0. So to find the equation, I have y minus y1, which is 1, equals the slope, 0, and then x minus x1, which is pi. Well, obviously, everything on the right-hand side is 0, because when you multiply by 0, you get 0. And my equation turns into y equals 1. So that is the equation of the tangent line at pi 1. Now, let's look at the actual graph. Here is pi 1. What's the equation of the tangent line? I can see that I have a dotted line, y equals 1. Great work on that. I know that's very difficult to do. Uh, coming up next, we're going to take a look at implicit differentiation.